What's up, Skins Nation? Welcome once again to Pigskin Facts, History and News, and I am your host of host, Fred Watson Jr. Thank you for watching once again. If this is your first time, please, please hit that subscribe button. And if you have any comments, go down below. If you have any thoughts, uh, anything about the games recently played, anything you want to share, or even on the facts that I that I that I present to you, or if you have the answers to the questions that I present, please feel free, put it in at the bottom. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. And those of you that are already subscribing, much love to you, Skins Nation. My Skins brothers and my Skins sisters, love you. All right. Well, week two is over. And we played against our arch rival, the Dallas Cowboys, and it didn't go as planned. We lost 31 to 21. And uh, the season, hey, the season's still young. Uh, we're 0-2, and uh, week three is, is a must-win game, um, a must-win game. Uh, we're, we're behind in the division right now. We have 14 games left. Still optimistic about the season. The season is not over yet. But uh, right, 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 right about now, um, we're going to need some miracles from heaven. We're going to really need some miracles from heaven. Uh, on our running game and on our defense. So before I get to that later on and um, talk a little bit about the game that was played yesterday, um, I like to move forward with some facts and haven't done that in a while. And first, I'd like to ask you, have three questions for you. And as always promised, I will give the answer on the next segment. So with that said, here we go. Who were... The three first round draft bust, B-U-S-T-S, -S, bust of the 1990s of the Redskins. Who were the three first round draftees bust of the 1990s? I will have that answer on the next segment. Second question, who was the Redskins head coach during the 2002 2003 seasons who was the redskins head coach during the 2002 and the 2003 redskins seasons and finally number three what was the nickname of the redskins small receivers virgil say alvin garrett and charlie brown these guys were before the posse was formed. And of course, you know, Art Monk, Gary Clark, and Ricky Sanders were the posse. But these guys preceded them. What was their nickname? What was the nickname of the Redskins' small receiving core? Virgil Say, Alvin Garrett, and Charlie Brown. A lot of you old school heads probably already know this one. Um, if, you're, if you're a new generation Redskin fan, you know, that's kind of like really digging real deep in the crates. So you'd have to dig that one up, but you can find it. So I will have all the answers to all of these questions on the next segment. Okay. And with that said, let's get to um, our shining moment, our gem of the day. Uh, we're not going to do a history session today. I'll bring that back next week, but we're going to do a shining moment of the day and our shining moment, our, our gem of the day, takes us back to the 19 January 17th 1988 um, the NFC championship game between the Redskins and the Minnesota Vikings and with that said uh let's 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 get into it okay the question that dominated the news in the nation cat in the nation's capital in the days leading up to the Redskins-Vikings NFC Championship game at RFK Stadium. The person in question was the Redskins All-Pro quarterback, Daryl Green. And I know a lot of you remember him. He's probably considered one of the greatest Redskins of all time. He played 20 seasons for the Washington Redskins, same franchise. Wow, it's phenomenal. And at one time, he was known as the fastest man in the NFL. He ran a 4-2. 
in the 40. Wow, phenomenal. Okay, the person in question was Redskins All-Pro cornerback Daryl Green, who damaged his uh, rib cartilage on a punt return for a touchdown in Washington's playoff win over Chicago the week before. He would be short, sorely needed to shut down the Vikings' dangerous wide receiver, Anthony Carter, who led the NFL in 1987 with a league-high 24.3-yard reception average. This guy was dangerous. Not only did Green, not only did Green play, but he produced his second clutch performance. Carter caught seven passes for 85 yards, but Daryl Green, having taken a pain-killing shot just before kickoff, held Carter in check by preventing any game breakers. The cornerback with world-class speed also broke up a fourth down pass at the goal line with less than a minute left, a memorable play that will stand the test of time that preserved the Redskins 17 to 10 lead and sent them to Super Bowl 22. The entire Redskins played, played superbly. Two goal line stands that held the Vikings to three points, eight sacks, and 76 yards rushing. The unit also compensated for an offense that struggled. We ran the ball very efficient that day, Redskin offensive tackle Joe Jacoby recalled. We were going up and down the field and getting inside the 20s, but we couldn't punch it in in the red zone. Our defense hung in there and gave us big plays, especially the one at the end that preserved the victory. The Vikings have been the surprise of the playoffs, despite entering the postseason with the worst record among all playoff teams at 8-7. and seven. They upset the New Orleans Saints 44-10 to 10 and the 49ers 36-24. They were a wild card team at the time. So they came in and and um, they pretty much, hey, they pretty much did their thing. Okay, the Vikings, uh, they were the surprise of the playoffs. Carter, he caught 16 passes for 306 yards and two wins. He also returned a punt, 84 yards for a touchdown against New Orleans. Minnesota's win over the 49ers allowed the Redskins to host the championship game. Knowing that Green would be lining up against Carter and that he'd be injured the week before, the Vikings had planned to pick on him, according to Minnesota quarterback Wade Wilson. He said, we wanted some plays where we run after him and he'd have to make tackles and we'd get him beat up a little bit. Wilson said, we also wanted to let Anthony work on him one-on-one. -on -one. Not that didn't happen. Surprise. The Vikings opened up by holding the ball for eight minutes and moving to the Redskins 33 yard line before being forced to punt. The Redskins immediately drove 98 yards in eight plays and quarterback Doug Williams hit running back Kelvin Bryant for the for a 42 yard scoring pass. While the Vikings failed to generate any offense against the swarming and blitzing defense. Why can't our Redskins be like that now? Okay, now back to our shining moment. The Redskins offense also sputtered. Kicker Ali Haji Sheik. Wow. Sounds like an Arabian oil businessman. Ali Haji Sheik missed 38 and 47 yard field goals. And Williams had trouble connecting with receivers. He was, he was 4 of 14 in the first half. Such inconsistency allowed the Vikings to hang around and Wilson's 23-yard scoring pass to wide out Leo Lewis tied the game at seven just before halftime. Williams continued to misfire in the second half in the offense that produced one three-and-out series after another, prompting boos from the home crowd of 55,212 in attendance. Coach Joe Gibbs said later that he never considered replacing Doug Williams with Jay Schrader. Meanwhile, the Redskins' defense forced the game's only turnover. Linebacker Mel Kaufman intercepted a tip pass that set up Haji Sheik's 28-yard field goal for a 10-7 Redskins lead with 430 left in the third period. I could just imagine, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to be racist, but I could just imagine this guy, instead of wearing a helmet, wearing a turban and kicking a field goal. Ali Haji Sheik. That, it's just a name. Sorry. 
Um, the Vikings responded by driving to first and goal at the three. But the reliable defense stiffened, and on third down from the one, linebacker Neil Okowitz stopped running back DJ Dozier for no gain. The Vikings decided not to go for it, and Chuck Nelson's 18-yard field goal created a 10-10 game. Doug Williams then found this mark on a 70-yard eight-play march. The Redskins were driving. He hit receiver Gary Clark for 43 yards to set up his seven-yard touchdown pass. Woo! To Gary Clark that put the Redskins ahead 17-10 with five minutes left. But the Vikings drove 60 yards to the Redskins' six-yard line where two straight incomplete passes created a fourth down and four with less than a minute left. The boisterous RFK crowd, which had been drowning out Wilson's signals. Yeah, 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 yeah. Drowned him out. Rose to a fever pitch. As for the defense, we were doing a lot of talking green, remember? This was our season to go to the Super Bowl, and we did not didn't want overtime. I expected the ball to go to Carter. I'm thinking, you ride the horse that brought you here. Wilson dropped back the pass. Fired the ball to running back Darren Nelson, an excellent receiver, on the far left around the goal line. The pass hit Nelson in the chest, but Green arrived simultaneously and pounded Nelson in the back. Nelson looked like he was losing control of the pass, but Green's hit disrupted the ball long enough to where it hit the ground. An ecstatic Green bolted upfield, ecstatic, holding his hand high a tramp. The Redskins bench and the delirious home crowd erupted joe gibbs kneeling on the sideline just before the snap with his head down said green answered his prayers the redskins won the champions nfc championship game 1988 17 to 10 before 55,212, and they went on to go to super bowl 22 and that set up history and it set up Doug Williams as being the first black quarterback to ever start a Super Bowl. The Redskins went on to win the Super Bowl 22, beating the Denver Broncos 42 to 10. And the MVP was, of course, Doug Williams, the very first black quarterback to win a Super Bowl. And that set off history for the Redskins. And that was our shining moment, our gem of the day. And, you know, it's something very interesting as I was reading that. <coughs> excuse me. Something very interesting as I was reading that, that it said the end of the championship game, Joe Gibbs was on his knees. So that lets me know that he was a coach that, uh, that prayed. Um, not to bring in religion or anything. Not to offend anybody, but uh, he prayed and the Redskins won. And to be honest, we need more of that. We need more prayers. And for our Redskins team, we need miracles from heaven. We really do. Miracles from heaven. And I'm going to give you my opinion. You can be glad. You can be sad. You can be mad. It doesn't matter. But I will tell you this. Coach Jay Gruden had a press conference and they were asking him different questions about, you know, what are you going to do to, to change the, you know, the defense? Or what are you going to, oh, well, we got to get better and we got to play better. That's not good enough. Change it. We we got to, we got to coach better. You've been saying that for four or five years now. Do it. So the way I feel right now, Coach Jay Gruden, you need to get out. Defensive coordinator Greg Minuski. I, I mean, we're not getting any kind of pass rush on the line, and we're only rushing four minutes at a time, and we're dropping back, and we're still getting beat in the pass. Change the defense up. Add more men on the line to rush. Load the box with eight if you have to. Defensive coordinator Greg Minuski. Get out. Get out. Cornerback, Josh Norman. Stop talking, man. 
Just do your job, man. Yesterday, Devin Smith, Dallas Cowboys, beats him on a 65-yard touchdown. The week before, Deshaun Jackson beats him on a 50-yard touchdown. And you can just see the look on his face is disgruntled. And But I will say this. On that particular play, on that particular play, the Redskins were in a cover three defense. Cover three defense. And on the back end, Josh Norman was supposed to get some help. So basically what happened on the right-hand side, you had Dominique. Rogers Cromartie. He was already limping. He was pretty much hurt on the other corner, the right corner, left corner. Josh Norman, safety, uh, Monte Nicholson. So basically, if you can see it, I don't know if you can see it or not, but basically, Dak throws the ball deep. Dak Prescott throws the ball deep. To Devin Smith, Josh Norman is here. Monte Nicholson is here. So a tight end came underneath, and I believe a running back. Monte Nicholson follows them. So instead of coming back on the back end and joining Josh Norman, Norman gets beat. Dominique Rogers Cromartie, by the time he comes over, it's too late. So basically, Josh Norman gets beat deep by Devin Smith. Monte Nicholson. Instead of falling back and joining Josh to break up the pass, he gets distracted and goes the other way. So basically, I don't know if you can see that play or not, and if you if you couldn't, I apologize. I was writing a pencil. But um, the point is, the point is he didn't get any back in help. But at the same time, as you saw that, as you saw the play, I don't know if you saw the highlights of it, but on the highlights. Josh Norman was basically running for his life just to catch up with Devin Smith, but it was too late. He had already gotten beat. So I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. It's like when we first got him, he was making dynamic plays. He was punching the ball out of people's hands, causing fumbles for, for our team. But now it's like he's getting burnt like Texas toast every game. It's like, what's going on? So my thought on that, Josh. Get out. So yesterday, um, there were a lot of uh, bright spots, but our, our defense, man, is, is right now is just terrible. Terrible. We're not getting any kind of pass rush, and we're getting beat deep a lot. And our secondary right now is playing like garbage. I know we have injury jonathan allen he's out with a knee um you know caleb brantley is out dominique rogers cromarty yesterday got hurt but he came back in the game was, was limping was barely running out there quentin dunbar hurt he's out fabian monroe hurt he's out but you know what other teams have injuries too so that can be no longer an excuse for us. They're professionals. Next man up. Next man up. Next man up. Come in. Do your job and help this team to win. But right now, our defensive front is not getting any kind of push on the quarterback. And Dak Prescott had probably one of his better games yesterday. I mean, he was 14 out of 14 in the second half. I mean, dude, come on. It, it, it doesn't make sense. We're, that's supposed to be the strength of our team is our defensive unit. And right now we're playing like we're the 32nd ranked defense in the NFL. And Jay Gruden is just, oh, well, we just have to play better. Uh, we'll just have to coach better. That's on the, You've been saying that for four years, coach. Come on, man. We got to do better. We got to do better. The offense right now, 
the I, I tell you, the, our offense, the problem is 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 in our offense is the running game, but our quarterback, he's playing well. He is not the problem. And many people thought that Case Keenum would come in and play like he did in Denver last year, and that hasn't been the case. He's done well. He's done well. So, you know, we have we have a lot of good pieces. We have a lot of young guys and on defense that that are, that are starting. And um, Cole Holcomb at linebacker, he is playing well. He's just a rookie, and this guy's coming in, and he's he's playing well. He's picking the game up. Um, cornerback Jimmy Moreland, the people's corner out of, of James Madison, uh, he had a penalty called on him yesterday. And, you know, that's expected. You're going to go through growing pains as a rookie. But he's also playing well on the defense. I will say that. Um, Landon Collins. He's flying up. He's making tackles. But it's 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 if we're not getting a push on the line, if we're not pressuring the quarterback, um, Brian Kerrigan did get a sack yesterday. Kudos to you, Ryan. But we need more of that. We need more of that. We need more of that from Montez Sweat, our first rounder. We need more of that from Ryan Anderson, the linebacker. We need those linebackers, the guys in the middle, the the, the the fill the gaps and the clog the running game. We did not play the run well yesterday. Dallas ran for 208 yards against our defense yesterday. Even quarterback Dak Prescott had a nice game running against us. Zeke, he ran for 111 yards yesterday. So we're really, we just really have a lot to clean up on defense. A lot, a whole lot. Um. So, you know, we just have a lot to clean up. On offense, uh, we have some plays that we probably left on the field. Um, Case Keenum, he, he went early to uh, ter Scary Terry, Terry McLaurin, our rookie, rookie wide receiver who is playing off the charts right now. He's playing phenomenal. He had five catches for 62 yards yesterday and a touchdown. And, and um, it's, it's something about him as a rookie. He gets it. This guy is taking off. You know, and this is this is kind of what we expected out of out of Josh Dotson, our uh, first rounder from uh, four years back, and that didn't happen. But this guy Terry McLaurin has come in, and he's proven that he's he's one of our top receivers now. He's getting the job done. Um, Case Keenum, our offensive line, I think, did not do horrible. We had some penalties, and we had to clean those penalties up, but. I think the offensive line is doing well enough to where we do have a passing game right now, but we need to be able to run the ball. And we really haven't been able to do that the last two weeks because we've been playing catch up, foot, play catch up from behind. Um, we They did some things in the first half that I was pressed with. They changed it up a little bit. They did some jet sweeps with uh, rookie Steven Sims and he's fast as lightning. And I thought that was cool, but I thought, I, I, I think that we should, probably incorporate that in our offense, not just use it as a, as a once in a while gimmick. But I think we should do more of that, have more motion in our in our movement. And the Cowboys did a lot of that. Yes, they had a lot of motion and we weren't ready for it. And we don't have enough of that in our offense. So we need more more motion, I think. But we 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 have got to block better and, and get off the blocks for our running game. We have got to open up running holes for uh, Adrian Peterson and kudos to Adrian. Congratulations. Uh, he passed Jim Brown for on, on, on the fifth, on the all time scoring touchdowns list uh, yesterday. So um, congratulations to you AP and uh, keep doing your thing. So, um, but we're going to have to do better. We got guys like um, Trey Quinn. That's, that's catching the ball. Well, this year, that's he's filling in wonderfully at the slot. He's getting open. He's got good hands. Uh, Paul Richardson yesterday caught a few balls. Uh, Vernon Davis, so he kind of he spread the spread the ball out. Um, I would just say he needs to get rid of the ball quicker. Um, but other than that, we're not we're not doing too bad on offense. Our next opponent will be Monday night against the Chicago Bears, and I will tell you right now if our running game is still not existent against the Chicago Bears because they have a stout defense, it's going to be a long night. If all we're doing is going to pass the ball and we don't run and we abandon the ball, uh, abandon, abandon running, running the ball, 
it's going to be a long night. Khalil Mack, the linebacker and the, the Bears, they they have an off, awesome defensive line. And we are really going to have to win this game. This game will probably be come down to the last quarter because the Bears are not very good offensively with their quarterback, Mitch Trubisky. But I will say this. If we do not get a push on that defensive line, on their offensive front, it may be a long night for us. Because you give any quarterback in the NFL time to throw, and you're going to be picked apart. I mean, hey, my grandmother can get behind center. And if you don't put any pressure on her, she'll pick you apart too. Hi, Grandma. I love you. Hi, Mom. Love you. So, so with that, hi, baby. Love you. Epea. So, um, with that said, you know, let's let's get it done, guys. Um, it's going to be a good game. And uh, on the next segment, I'll go more in-depth on our injury report and then go more in-depth on our matchups against the Bears. So uh, looking forward to that. Um, we're 0-2, but uh, come on, guys. We got we to gotta, we gotta pull out of this. Um, we have the Bears Monday night. Then the following the following Sunday, we have we have the New York Giants, and after the New York Giants, we have another home game against the defending world champions, the New England Patriots. So we have some tough games coming up, and uh, we're we're gonna have to we're gonna have to win some games now. Uh, we're gonna have to really do some soul searching as a team, and and. Uh, win some games. So, and also if we're ever going to do this again, Redskins defeat the Cowboys, we're going to have to become better on both sides of the ball for this to happen again. And I'm looking forward to it. Uh, we have some building blocks in place. Uh, I'm happy about that. And we have a lot of young guys that are that are playing very well, that have been inserted into the, the starting lineup, and they're, and they're doing well, offense and defense. So we have some building blocks for the future, and, and things are looking up. So Skins fans, stay optimistic. Hang in there. I know, I know it's tough now, but things are going to turn around. Hail Skins Nation, I love you. That's the end of our segment. Another segment of Pigskin Facts. History and news with your host of hosts, Fred Watson Jr. Hail Skins Nation, my Redskins brothers and sisters. Love you. I'll see you next time. Enjoy the week. Peace. <laughs>